This is the Lock Picking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is a Trimax round body padlock. It's the model TPL2251L. This is a low cost Chinese made alternative to more common round body padlocks like the American Lock Series 700 or the Master Lock Model 930. What we're going to be doing today is seeing what it takes to pick into this lock, and then of course I will take it apart to show you what's inside. I'm also going to show you a bypass that allows me to open any one of these Trimax locks in just a couple of moments. But before we do any of that, I want to show you the packaging because there's a couple of anomalies on there. On the back of the packaging, there are a set of features that are listed here. The first of which is a hardened solid steel lock body. Now this lock body is indeed made out of steel. However, I have tested it and it certainly is not hardened. Next, it says that we have an 11 millimeter hardened boron alloy shackle, and I did test the shackle and it is indeed well hardened. As far as a boron alloy goes, I have never seen one of these cheaper Chinese made padlocks with a boron alloy shackle. So I have no way of testing whether or not it's true. However, if indeed it is, it would be a remarkable feature. Finally, number five, it says there is a removable five pin cylinder with 9,000 key changes. A couple things about that. First, this has a six pin cylinder, not a five pin cylinder. So the packaging short sells the lock in that regard. As far as the key changes go, it says 9,000. Now this is a six pin lock. And to give you an idea, a comparable American brand padlock with a six pin cylinder would have somewhere in the neighborhood of a quarter million possible key changes. So 9,000 doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I tried to do the math every way I could with reasonable sets of assumptions, and under no set of circumstances could I come out anywhere close to 9,000. So I'm not sure where they got that number, just doesn't make a whole lot of sense though. Okay, all that said, let's get to picking. With this American lock keyway, I'm going to use top of the keyway tension with a 50 thousandths pry bar and a standard hook in 25 thousandths. Okay, nothing on one, two, little click on three, nothing on four, five, six is binding, got a click there. Back to the beginning, nothing on one, two, three, click on four, Number five is binding, got a click there, nothing on six. Little click out of one, click out of two, nothing on three, four, five, or six, probably just one right now. And that is indeed it. Okay, I might have felt some rounded off spools. However, I really didn't have to allow much counter rotation. So as far as picking goes, they might as well all be standard pins. We'll see what that is in just a moment. But before we take it apart, I want to show you the unforgivable sin of this lock. And that is that it is easily bypassable with a tool like this. You simply reach through the keyway and it opens up that easily. One more time, reach through the keyway and it opens up with these standard American lock bypass tools. Once we take this apart, I'll give you a better idea of why that works. Okay, so to take this apart, we have a Phillips screw down the shackle hole. So let's take that out. Okay, as I am taking this plate out, it seems to be a little bit on the thin side. I've taken apart a whole lot of locks with this type of construction, and this one seems way too thin, at least compared to comparable American or master lock products. I actually have my pinning kit here, and I think I have a couple spares. Let me take a couple out. Okay, this is a master lock plate. This is an American lock plate. Let's put them next to this Trimax. And okay, let's zoom in. You can see the Trimax plate on the far right is, is a fair bit thinner than the rest. 
So they did skimp out a little bit on the retention plate. Okay, let's take this core apart now. Looks like we'll need a C-clip remover. is a really stiff C-clip. Ah, there we go. Okay, now we should just need the key and a follower, and this will come apart. You know, on these cheaper Chinese locks, oftentimes they are skeletonized on the inside, and just in case that is what we have here, I'm gonna try to stick a shim in there before I pull the cylinder out. Hmm. That shim is not going in easily, so I guess we're just gonna take our chances. Okay, luckily it was not a skeletonized core. Okay, let's drop these key pins out. One is standard, so is two, three, four. I accidentally dropped five out as well. And six. Let me arrange all of these key pins and then we'll get the driver pins out. Okay, for our driver pins, number one is, is another key pin. So is number two. And I'm placing these in the same direction that they are coming out of the cylinder. And on, the key p and on these pins, all of the key pins are facing downward, which means we have a really, really wide open shear line. This is remarkable, this is terrible. Okay, so for driver pins, we have six short key pins with the rounded portion facing toward the cylinder, which would make this remarkably easy to rake. I probably should have tried that. Let's see the springs, they all appear to be stainless steel, so that's a point in its favor. Okay. Now I said I would give you a little bit more explanation of why the bypass works, and to do that I need to give you a closer look at this core. On the core we have a vertical actuator. It's parallel with the keyway. Now on some locks, there is a horizontal actuator that's perpendicular with the keyway. Those are generally not bypassable. The reason we can bypass the ones with the vertical keyway, or the vertical actuator, is that I can reach straight down the keyway with this tool, and rather than the core turning the, the locking mechanism, I'll just turn with my bypass tool, and I can manipulate the locking mechanism. So it's a really clever little tool. It's something that's been known for a very long time. I'm talking decades. These were an issue with American locks many, many years ago. They've since started installing anti-bypass plates in their cores. They are little plates that look like this that are specifically designed for blocking that bypass tool. And since this is such a big issue or common issue, I should say, on these locks, I do keep a supply of these on hand, so when I do run across it, I can insert the anti-bypass plate. However, this one certainly does not come with it from the factory, and that is, in my opinion, an absolute sin, an unforgivable one. Okay, let me give you a close-up of all this. Okay, these pins, I need to give you a really close look because these are unbelievable. All of the key pins are standard. The driver pins, however, are all key pins. 
and I have them in the tray here exactly how they were situated in the lock. So you can see why we would have a really wide open shear line when those pins come together. I suspect this would be an incredibly easy lock to rake. Moving over to this core, nothing unusual about it. We have the American lock keyway, a relatively open one that we were able to fit a 25 thousandths thick pick in. And then of course we have that vertical actuator on the back. Okay, that's all I have for you on this Trimax model TPL2251L. If you have any questions or comments about this, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.